Hi, so today a deep dive of the context package in Go. So this package allows you to build and manipulate a context and a context is just a scope holder. So basically here, just a, a quick example where you have um, an application where you can send a request and then this request will perform an HTTP communication, for instance, and then subsequently we'll do a um, um, DB operation, for instance. So if you use context, you can pass um, a specific context for this specific request and the context will be aware of which request it belongs to. So you can do fancy stuff that we will see um, later on, like you can store values inside a context, but, but more importantly, the um, context package exposes tools for you to control the flow. So what I mean by that is, for instance, for any reason, we, we have a timeout at the DB layer. And so the context can, the context for that request can relay that information to the HTTP layer, for instance, and cancel it, for, for instance. Another example is, uh, for instance, um, a user is canceling the request. So then this cancellation can be propagated via the context and stop a long, expensive DB query, um, for instance. So um, you will often, often see that some libraries and SDKs are exposing methods asking for a context. So let's crack on with uh, the only struct of the package, which is uh, the context. So this is the scope holder that I was uh, telling you about. So you have two ways to instantiate this um, struct. So first one is dot background. This is a package method. So uh, let's just have a look to to that. So you can see that it's simply saying context background. So um, then if we try to see which methods are available on this um, instance, you can see four methods that we will um, dig deeper later on. Um, the other way to um, instantiate a context is to use to do. So you can see that it's just rendering a context to do here. If you're building an application, so context background will be um, how you create a context from scratch at the beginning of your request. And to do will be used when your one of your component needs to use the context, but you don't know yet uh, how you're going to pass it. First instance method that we're going to see is the dot value method. So this one just allow you to inspect your your context um, to ask if it has um, the value for this key, basically. So the key here is my key. So you can see that the CTX doesn't have this uh, my key value, basically. So then um, package method that we're going to see is with value. So with value is taking a parent context a key and then the value for that key so we're gonna populate the key my key with the value one two three and um, with value is rendering back a context so we're gonna call it ctx2 and we will just uh, use the um, the instance method that we saw previously dot value on context two for the key, um, my key, basically. Uh, here you can see what a, a CTX2 looks like. It's a context from um, um, with value, basically. So then if we run that, you can see that one, two, three is the value for the key, my key, on the context two only. Okay, so so let's have a look now to this um, package method with cancel. So with cancel is taking um, parent context. So let's send uh, our CTX, for instance. 
and then it's returning a context and a function, a cancel function. So we can. Um, so now let's have a look to an um, instance method called uh, error, standing for error on this context. So we will log this error um, before calling the cancel function and then after to see what's um, going on. So you can see that the first one it's rendering no error and the um, second log line after invoking the, the um, cancel function you can see that it's a context cancelled and um, the um, package is exposing a constant called context cancel so you can see that the error is equal to this context cancel. So you saw here how to cancel a context and how does it reflect um, on the on the scope holder basically on the context. So next uh, package method is the with deadline. So with deadline is taking a parent context and a time. So here we're just gonna um, send t and t will be now and then now after uh, one second for instance. So with deadline is rendering back a context and a cancel function again which is the which has the same purpose of the um, previous package method with cancel that we saw. So here we can log um, the context and uh, let's have a look. So what will happen? The context will be cancelled after one second, basically. So we're gonna sleep for uh, two seconds and we will see which errors are coming back to us. So you see it's sleeping and then we have this error, context deadline exceeded, which is different from context cancel that we saw before. So then here you have this constant um, from the context package, which is deadline exceeded. And we can test that it's indeed this error, which is coming back. Um, so here, um, I just want to show you that the cancel, cancel function is exactly the same as we saw before. So if I'm canceling the context directly, um, at line 21, uh, we should have uh, two, conce two contexts uh, cancelled, basically. Uh, it's false because the context was cancelled and it wasn't a um, deadline exceeded, basically. There you go. So we just saw how to cancel a context uh, by giving a precise time, basically. So. I want to show you another instance method that you have uh, available on uh, the context, which is deadline basically. So we're gonna do ctx2 dot deadline. So the deadline method is um, rendering to you the time of the deadline and a boolean, which is gonna tell you if there is uh, a deadline or not, basically. So you can uh, print them, so the deadline and then the OK. So here you can see that um, the deadline is set up one second after uh, we launched the, uh, this routine and the OK is true basically. There you go. So 13, 36, 13 against 36, 12, basically, one second after. And there is a deadline, which is due to this line uh, 19. Now let's have a look to um, this package method um, with timeout. So uh, it's taking a parent context and now a duration, not a time. So we're going to call it timeout 
and we're just gonna put um, one second timer for instance so time second times one and then uh, we're just gonna assign um, to context two and then you can see that same pattern again you can have a cancel function which I'm not gonna show you because it's exactly the same as the with cancel and the with deadline so if we just uh, log the the error on the context two and wait two seconds so you can see that um, it's rendering back for the second log line it's rendering back um, context deadline exceeded error so with timeout is exactly the same thing as with deadline but it's using a duration instead of um, time so to demonstrate the last property that you can have on a context um, I will need a function which is taking a context and then it's gonna it's just gonna be a select statement um, with um, receivers uh, channel so basically this function will return uh, whatever is the first uh, case statement uh, fulfilling the condition basically so the first condition is the time uh, two seconds have gone after the calling this function and the second statement will be one second after this function was invoked so if I just quickly uh, invoke that function uh, it's after not after func so um, if I'm invoking that function with uh, just our background initial context so we should see uh, it should end up after one second which is gonna be the first um, condition met basically after one second you saw the delay as well so um, now let's build a third case statement uh, with our last uh, instant method which is uh, dot done basically so dot done is a receiver channel so it's the same type as time after and uh, if this uh, context done message is received we will just print a log line with boom context is done so here the rerun uh, just um, the function just re-render that case because that was the first condition met when we invoke the function so the context is not done basically so now let's uh, just uh, reshuffle a bit our previous uh, with timeout context so um, let's remove the second case statement as well and let's um, um, modify the first one with three seconds so um, let's reshuffle that as well so still a timeout of one second uh, we will sleep uh, for two seconds so then uh, the timeout should uh, be hit so the context to will error with a uh, context deadline exceeded basically and then we will invoke our function so you see that we ended up on the second case because the third first case with the three seconds um, has not been met because we just waited for two seconds basically so if you remember at the beginning of the video I was explaining that context can help to control the flow so here we're just gonna derive um, a context from context to the context with the timeout from the previous example uh, I'm just deriving a context with a value so nothing fancy in terms of timeout so then context free is just um, children from uh, context to so we're gonna invoke uh, our function context two and context three. So obviously context two will um, hit its timeout, and let's see what's going on from the uh, child context three point of view. Right. So you can see that uh, 
both contacts uh, was terminated. So now you should have all the basics on the context package so you won't be afraid anymore to see them appearing in different libraries and SDKs. So um, to go further on the subject I invite you to see how um, the different um, timeout patterns are implemented and different patterns on the control for strategies as well. And I also invite you to deep dive and see uh, how famous SDK are implementing or manipulating those contexts. So a good example is the AWS SDK, Golang SDK. So thanks for watching and happy coding.